Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Odd Rob. So a few friends asked me, what do I do to prepare for my traveling? Well, I'd like to share a few of the apps that I use to make my experiences, both foreign and domestic, so much easier. So whenever I'm traveling by car in the United States, the GPS app that I use is called Waze, W-A-Z-E. Out of several of the ones that I've used, I find that Waze seems to have less glitches and actually I haven't run into anything major with it. I've used it extensively for my uh, driving and travel within the United States. And at some point, I plan on using it out of the country. But up to now, I haven't used Waze outside of the United States. It has been a lifesaver to be able to avoid heavy traffic caused by whatever, whether it's rush hour or an accident may have happened or whatever the case may be. I found it very good for finding immediate alternate routes. As far as uh, booking flights, hotels, and car rentals, I prefer an app called Travelocity. And again, as with all the, all the apps that I'll be talking about, Travelocity is what suits me best for my travel needs. I use it extensively in the United States states and traveling abroad. And to date, I've had no problems, no complaints. Next is a really cool app. Uh, it's an activity app that I'm pretty excited about. The app is called Get Your Guide. You simply locate a city that you wish to explore, type it in, and a list of to-do things pops up for you. It will show you the most popular things to see and do in that area, as well as how much they cost if you go on any excursions or whatever, and tons of other useful information. Now, even if you don't want to spend money on excursions, it's an extremely valuable tool to help you plan what you'd like to see. One of the things that I've used the most on Get Your Guide is to see if hop-on and hop-off buses are available to where you're going. Now, although I haven't used hop-on, hop-off uh, buses in the States yet, I've used it quite a bit overseas. You simply book a 24 or 48 hour pass, and although the cost varies by location and season, the ones I've used have cost between 24 and $30, US dollars that is, per person, per 24 hour booking. So after you've paid uh, through the app, just go to one of the stops that's available. There's usually people sometimes with flags on their backs or whatever, very, very helpful. And you can hop on or hop off at all the major points of interest. The buses come around about every 20 to 30 minutes. Me personally, I usually try to find a hotel pretty close to one of the stops. So if you're feeling a little tired, if you have horrible knees like me, I highly recommend giving this a try. Now, the last couple of suggestions that I'd like to make are First, if there's a particular hotel chain that you enjoy and suits your needs best, consider becoming a member. The more you stay with them, the more points you earn and the more perks you'll get. Membership is almost always free and you can join as many hotel chain memberships as you'd like. Secondly, if you do a lot of flying especially, consider maybe getting a credit card to a particular airline that will give you points. There are many options to choose from and ways to get those points, whether it's flying or buying things or whatever. And again, if you fly a lot, you can receive many benefits. Everything from special lounge use at airports to seat upgrades and even discounted or free flights using the points that you've accumulated. Although this isn't a complete list of apps that are available to you, I hope I've provided some sort of starting point to get you going. Now everyone's needs are different, so find what works best for your travels. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons down below to help the channel grow. And while you're down there, drop a comment, maybe give some feedback. It's always, always, always appreciated. And so until next time, stay safe, stay well, and by all means, you already know it, ha, stay odd. Yeah.